Towers of Agazba is a unique open world game of exploration and village building. I got to play the game for a few days before EA release, so I had a chance to look at it in a little more detail and got a good feel for the game and its mechanics. I've gone back and forth some about how I feel about this game, and that's largely due to how some of the game's various systems work, and I'll touch on those details in a minute. But the game definitely has a beauty and a charm about it. One part of the game is the survival crafting aspect, where you have to gather resources, manage inventory, craft and build, while preparing for increasingly more difficult areas, like many survival games. Then it also has this different system, where it blends with ecosystem management and village building that makes it more unique and fresh than the traditional survival game. It's an interesting layer to add. The story is that of the Shimu people, who have been shipwrecked on the shores of Agaspa, their once beautiful homeland that has now become desolate and consumed by the wither. Through beautiful cutscenes, with some quite quirky characters, and meeting the grumbling forest god, you go through the initial tutorial phase, learning about the story and learning about the various systems in-game and how to navigate them. The game does a pretty clear job of walking you through what these are and how to use them, including being able to swim, climb up things like Link from Zelda, and even giving you your first version of a glider very early on, which is a great perk as it takes a little time to be able to portal around the map or get a mount. You'll learn to craft from your inventory or a crafting station, how to build, skip time in your tent, hunt or combat mobs, cook over a campfire, and farm resources, which will be necessary in this desolate land. Importantly, you learn how to plant a special seed to grow a king tree, which establishes a unique ecosystem in each biome, of which there are currently three, and you begin the process of expanding flora and fauna in order to return the land to flourishing. Fantastical creatures and plants are attracted to the king tree, and you, with your once-in-a-generation special skill of being able to harness amity, which is the force within all living things, nurture and balance renewing the world. When you do things to increase the ecosystem, such as planting trees, feeding or healing an animal, you gain amity. When you do things to take away from the ecosystem, such as hunting animals or over-harvesting an area, you lose amity. So you have to do things in some range of balance. You'll be using this amity throughout the game to attain higher and higher advancements that we'll get into in a sec. It's an interesting system, and I hope that more devs will take some cues from this design of growing resources to replace the ones you've taken, as I see people asking for that ability often. You use your shimu scope to scan and catalog the large range of creatures, some of which are quite tricky to catch. And it gives you information about each, such as what they eat and what resources they have the potential to give when either fed or hunted. An interesting aspect of the game is that, just like chess in Enshrouded, you're not always guaranteed to get exactly the same thing every time. There's a range of things that you can get from animals and plants, which makes it feel more dynamic. Interestingly, you don't get the same thing from every seed you plant either, unless it's planted in your farm where you decide what you're growing. But when planting seeds out in the ecosystem, you know whether you're planting a tree or a plant or mushrooms, but which one will bloom is a mystery until the seed is in the ground. Then it will tell you what is growing and how long until it can be harvested. While you're growing the ecosystem, you'll also be growing a starter village. This is definitely more of a village builder like Aska or Bellbright in the sense that you're placing down whole buildings at a time that have different workstations at each. There are individual decorations and village improvements that you can add along the way, and these decos add culture points that increase the happiness of your villagers. However, although the villagers are around and technically, quote, building the buildings when you bring in the supplies, it's really done with a cutscene, and the building rises from the ground in phases, and the townsfolk are really more like placeholders at this point. The devs have said that they want them to do more in the future. 
and they've already put a road map out of many things that they plan to come. The character guides will eventually lead you to repairing a large bridge so that the tribe can find their original city of Midhaven and begin repairing the world there on the main landmass. Thus, I recommend not spending too much time invested on the starter island as you're likely going to want to start a similar process on the mainland. Dreamlet says that the amount of map that we have access to currently is about 20% of the size it will eventually be. And they are estimating for early access of about 18 months. That sounds like a hopeful time frame to me, but we'll see. A really nice perk of making it to the mainland is that you get your first mount, the Haralope, right away. And these mounts are quite fun. They're fast, they move responsively, are quite good at getting over rocky terrain and even jump low walls on their own. Most impressively, it's like Link's horse with an ancient saddle. When you whistle, they will appear with you from anywhere, even across islands. You'll also be able to start spending some amity on activating portals you find in ruins around the world for fast travel. And near the town of Midhaven is a multiplayer gate that miraculously has not been damaged by time and the wither. With access to the multiplayer gate, you can get or give a code that it provides and allow up to three friends to visit your world and help out. Progression is saved for each world and you can bring established characters between worlds. They're looking at the possibility of dedicated servers at some point in the far off future, but because of the way the game is designed, that would be a major change and we have no promises. You'll meet the forest god again and after finding special leaves to sober him up, <laughs> begin exploring further into the game with more advanced creatures, builds, mobs, and environments. The mechanics of the game that you use throughout are mostly pretty intuitive and it has some really modern gaming aspects like having quest steps pinned in the top corner and being able to craft from storage, which is absolutely genius. I've become so spoiled to this feature that it's almost just annoying anytime a game doesn't have it now. But there are definitely some improvements that need to be made as well. One basic thing that I expect open world exploration games to have is the ability to change how close or far you can zoom in on your character. I change my perspective often depending on what I'm doing and I felt constricted being locked into one predefined POV all the time. Inventory management has the basics of good tools such as being able to fast transfer a whole stack from inventory to chest. However, it doesn't always work currently and has trouble stacking like items together, which makes for an extra task of playing the matching game to move things over. Combat is pretty straightforward and the bow works surprisingly well. It's nice to be able to pick up arrows that have missed or are sticking out of a mob. The sword strikes work smoothly and the dodge roll is effective. However, there's currently no way to block that I found and the spear throwing felt a little clunky. Although, honestly, that could be in part because I don't care for spear throwing. Why would I want to use a perfectly good weapon that I just throw away? But that's for another day. There's a decent amount of fighting in the game with the blighted enemies or predators. Combat isn't overly technical. There's no parrying or directional combat or anything like that. And honestly, I wouldn't expect it as this is described as a cozy game. So if you're wanting Valheim or Bellwright style combat, then this is not the game for you. But if you're looking for an experience of more exploration, crafting, adventure, then it may be up your alley. The UI will need some tweaks as well. And a dev told me before EA launched that they're already looking at that, but they want more player feedback first. I'd say that they need to add a quick key for each section in the UI instead of having to hit tab and then go to each one individually. And I think this radial wheel system for quick slots will likely also be controversial. PS players are accustomed to this style, but it takes a beat to get used to using it on PC, and it's definitely not as fast to switch to combat mode. One thing I really think needs to change, well, it's two in one really, is about how things are harvested. 
When you walk up to an item to harvest, you have to individually select the tool to use. Like if you had a pickaxe in your hand, you have to manually use the radial wheel to switch to hatchet to cut down a tree or shovel to dig up a stump. This should be more intuitive and do it automatically like Enshrouded does, especially since they don't have the hotkeys to do it as quickly. Also, when harvesting a tree or boulder or whatever, you can't just swing at it, you have to hit E, okay. But then you have to hit E for each and every swing. This is excessive keystrokes and it gets old really fast. This all just makes the grind to harvest things take excessive time and it seems like it's done just to slow you down. Although it is nice that the harvested items go straight into your inventory. Inventory space does allow for stacking of items, but of course we usually want more inventory and that is the case here also. Especially since there are no separate slots for tools on your radial wheel. There's such a huge variety of items to hoard and there's no repair function for broken tools or weapons, meaning that you need more resources on you at all times to build new ones along with a variety of foods to feed different animals. What do we want? Say it along. Backpack, please. Agaspa hit some hard snags on launch day with the biggest challenges to launching on PS5 with lots of crashes. There are still some bugs on PC as well. But the team communicated a lot, worked quickly and around the clock addressing issues and pushing out patches as fast as they could, and the Steam reviews have gone from negative to mixed at the moment. So, my honest opinion, I think that Towers of Agaspa is a visually beautiful game with a lovely story. The characters are quirky and sometimes a little cheesy. <laughs> The exploration is good in that the ways of exploring around the map are fun and you get the rewards of getting to do the fun types of exploring pretty much right off the bat with gliders and mounts and portals and ruins. The crafting progression system makes sense, although they need to make adjustments to make the UI more efficient and fix some bugs. Building is about village building, not creative building, so go in with that expectation. Combat is fun, but not hardcore. The death penalty is mild. This is a cozy game. The addition of an ecosystem management is unique and adds a nice layer to the game that elevates it. The story and progression was interesting enough that I did find myself wanting to continue on and find out what comes next. Considering the amount of bugs and crashes that people had at launch, they probably should have waited a month to launch, honestly. But we're here now, and it's time to stomp bugs and listen to feedback. It is early access after all, and so that is the process. We'll see how fast the team gets to things. If you want a more smooth experience, then I'd say maybe wait a few weeks before jumping in to let them smooth some things out a bit. If you want a hardcore survival combat game, then this is not the game for you. However, if you want an experience of exploration with an interesting story, some combat, and a focus on farming, animals, crafting, village building, and cozy adventures, then Towers of Agaspa could be your cup of tea. You'll just need a bit of patience for those bugs that need stomping and adjustments that need to be made. If you appreciate the work that goes into making a video like this, then please leave a like and consider free subscribing. Until next time, happy gaming.